Amanda, we'll come to you. We'll go to the first question with Joseph Duarte there in the middle. Joseph, go ahead. Kellen, can you uh, can we start off just getting an update on, on Marcus? Yeah, he had five stitches. Nasty. That was a nasty one. They the uh, boxers. You know, when they hit you and open up your, right above your, uh, I think it's right above his eyebrow. That was uh, um, yeah, five stitches. He'll be all right. Um, you know, with him going out, you were able to get some other guys in. Yeah, it's a good night for that. You know, um, um, I told, told uh, Jamal to, um, you know, when I took him out, I said, I, I don't plan on putting him back in. You know, Emmanuel needs to play. Terrence needs to play. Um, I, I think the guy I was most pleased tonight was Jarris. You know, he played hard. I mean, Fred, he's a freshman. You know, he looks exactly like all of our freshmen look when they were freshmen. He's replacing a guy that played five years. The all-time winningest player in the history of this school. Don't compare him to Fabian. Compare him to Fabian when Fabian was 19. You know, he's uh, um, same with Terrence. Same with me. We're playing. You know, we haven't played. Uh, freshmen usually don't play here. They play, but they're not playing major minutes because they know that their their time is coming. They just work hard every day. Keep hitting the rock, and um, you know, eventually they'll get the word. Uh, these, these older guys are. But, um, you know, we had to play Tremont a point a lot tonight. That helped him. Get, I thought he played good at the point. Um, JVA got to play extended minutes. You know, I, I looked a little bit at Reggie and JVA together even. You know, so we, we experimented with some uh, things in that. But a big thing, even though we were doing all that, and, you know, we got 50% of our misses. You know, we're we the one, two, or three in the nation offensive rebounding. That's, that's, uh, that's important to us. So even though that uh, we're running, you know, lineups we don't normally have out there on the floor, uh, we, we still adhere to our principles uh, of what, uh, how we define Cougar basketball. And uh, our kids did good, took care of the ball, eight turnovers. You know, it's hard, it's, it's not easy to hold a team under 50. It's not easy. <laughs> this team's coming off the game where they should score 80 so. You know, I mean, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's difficult. Um, you know, uh, Jamal had a uh, short night, but he had 10 assists, no turnovers. You know, Marcus was on one of those uh, uh, benders where, uh, you know, he was, he was getting ready to get busy now. You could tell it. He was, he was on his way. So, but gave other guys an opportunity. So, you know, we go... Uh, good win, get to 9-0, and move on, and find another day. Calvin, how important is it Jarrett's uh, rebounds at that level? Is that, is that something you, you, you talked to him about? Yeah, it's a process with all of our freshmen. You know, they're not going to come in doing that. It's, it's not easy to do. If it was, then uh, all these kids from these other schools would do it. You know, um, we have different levels. You know, we, we have that bubble. Uh, plastic thing we put over the rim, we call it a bubble. Uh, I'm sure these players have other names for it, but I call it a bubble. Um, you know, he was the only one signed it tonight. He had five offensive rebounds. You know, the other, the other night against uh, uh, St. Mary's, uh, you know, he's, he just wasn't, didn't play as tough as we needed him to play. You gotta learn to play tough. It's not about talent. If talent was the case, then uh, it's like the year we went to the Final Four. Number one recruiting class in the nation that year that had five Jerises was Kentucky. They didn't make the tournament. We went to the Final Four because we had men. You know, you don't win with freshmen at this level. Multiple freshmen. You just don't. Nobody does. Number one recruiting class was Kentucky. The number two recruiting class was Duke. The thing that they both had in common that year, neither one made the tournament because they had a bunch of Jerises. Talented, talented kids that are 19 years old. You know, we'd all like to make our living playing against those guys. You know, they're just not ready. Now, the next year, they're going to be a problem. The year after that, multiple, huge problem. Because they go from 19 to 20 to 21. They, they go through all the trials and tribulations and wars and battles of getting your head uh, beat in, you get beat up, you get knocked down, but you, uh, you keep getting up. Uh, Jairus has been knocked down this year. 
But he's keep getting up. I tell him, come to work every day. You know, the first step on the ladder to success is always failure. Most people, uh, immature people don't deal with well with failure. You know, and immature people don't understand that it is going to be failure. I tell them, prepare for failure. You're going to fail. We all fail. You know, figure it out. You know, nobody's feeling sorry for you. Um, it's like Emmanuel. Look at all the trials and tribulations he's been through. Look at tonight. He's better. He's a much better player today than he was a month ago. Um, but any any time that uh, I get Emmanuel minutes like tonight, it's an investment in our future. You know, these guys are our future. Um, so, uh, JVA, um, how many minutes you play tonight, uh, JVA? 19. Emmanuel got to play 19. You know, if, Ter if Marcus hadn't have got hurt, Emmanuel might not have got 19. Might have got 12. So there's always, um, there's, I saw a lot of positives uh, 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 tonight. Um, but the big, biggest takeaway that I took out of that game is why the hell didn't Ryan Elvin play more? Joseph here, and then we'll go back to Christy. I don't know, are you done with that thought? <clears throat> Kelvin, it, was a, it was a passing thought. <laughs> Kelvin, on Jarris uh, being a freshman and, and playing meaningful minutes, is, was it by based on was it need his physical, just the fact that what? his physical, no, in terms of him playing Tonight? and being a, no, and being a freshman and playing as much as he's playing, uh, was it yeah. he had need going into the season and the fact for me? That, yeah, for him, uh, no. for him physically that? No, I just. Uh, um, that's one good thing about being a head coach, you start who you want to. You know, I just wanted to start him, see how you do. You know, um, you know, he said, uh, you know, he played good in one of the open scrimmages, not so good in the other. He's had good games, bad games. Um, um, you know, if I were to put my five guys that impacted winning uh, out there, um, I'd probably have Reggie out there. But, uh, our guys don't have egos. We, we don't deal with egos here. We, we coach them out of that. You know, uh, as, this isn't an ego program. Other coaches probably have to put up with that stuff, but uh, our ego is a team ego. Our ego comes from getting 50% of your misses and being excited about that because we did it together. Uh, Jamal getting 10 assists, being, being excited for Jamal because we're a team. Um, but our, our kids... Uh, but you, those freshmen have to understand, but that's why you have a culture. Programs that have a culture never have consistency. Because you're basing it on something that uh, that's, um, the players aren't playing for each other. Our kids play for each other. They're excited for each other's uh, success, and they're very vocal about that. Christy in the back, please. What was the key to the, those last 10 minutes of the first half where y'all really locked down and yeah. had that big run to, to pull away by halftime? Yeah, no, that's a great question because I mentioned that twice in the um, uh, huddle. Uh, keep it abide the paint because they were spraying it for threes. You know, uh, there's only way that there's only one way that team could hurt us, and that was from the three-point line. There was not another way. But uh, we were we were breaking down, um, and we we're collapsing. You know. You know, we don't help off corners on slot drives, for instance. If you drive the slot, we don't help off the corner. What we did twice tonight, it cost us six points. Now, I'll address that in the film tomorrow. There will be an accountability when we get back to practice because you don't do that. We don't do that. We didn't do it for 40 minutes against St. Mary's. As soon as Ramon went in tonight, he ran to the ball. He kicked the corner shot of three. Should have got it off. And then uh, when they got the ball to the paint, uh, and that team's well coached on that. You can tell that's who they are, that's their identity to shoot threes. Uh, how many did they shoot tonight? Um, 24. But if they were playing against a, a bad defensive team, they would have got 40 off. The fact that they only got 24 tells you how good our defense was after the first 10 minutes. After the first 10 minutes, after those first 10 minutes, but we were playing a lot of people. Um, you know, we had rotations out there that you never see us have. So, but. Uh, but we, we locked down. I don't think they scored the last eight minutes of the first half. And then the second half, you know, uh, I've, I've come to the conclusion after uh, 40 years of doing that, it's really, really hard to be perfect. Yeah, for JBA, just last year sitting on the bench, what, what was your biggest learning takeaways and how important are, you know, nights like tonight where you're getting those significant minutes and being able to, you know, just get a taste of college basketball. 
Um, I knew last year that my time was going to come just waiting, uh, playing behind Josh and Reggie, just watching them all the time in practice and games, seeing how, how they play, how they play defense and all that. Um, and I try to implement that to what I'm doing now today. Um, and coach always stays on me uh, every day. And so uh, I feel like doing uh, just, just yeah, implementing that to my game, that's what I've been taking. We go to Andy on the right. Go ahead, Andy. Emmanuel, how, how would you describe that kind of transition just in terms of having to, to learn to, to be able to play at that level that they expect in terms of the toughness standpoint? How, what, what's that like from your perspective? I mean, it really takes 100% of your effort. And just being able to, to sit and see that from the bench, and you learn a lot so that you're ready when you do go in the game because you know what the players in front of you are doing. More questions? Back to Chris here in the middle. Kelvin, have you seen uh, Jamal take a, another step, it, you know, as a floor general in controlling a game? Well, one of the things I've, I've always done is I recruit my captains. I don't develop captains. I recruit them, you know, like Nate Henry. When I was, when I was recruiting Nate, I said, the kid's going to be a captain. When I was recruiting Galen Robinson, the kid's going to be a captain. When I was recruiting Jamal, be a captain. I didn't say that about JVA. I didn't say about Emmanuel. There's, there's guys that are natural leaders. You know, Galen Robinson is a natural leader. You know, um, you know, he's an energy giver. He gives energy off. Great energy. Uh, Jamal's an energy giver. You know, he gives, uh, uh, exudes energy for his teammates. Um, and, um, you know, long after Nate gets done playing, I'd be surprised if he's not an outstanding coach. Galen's going to be an outstanding coach. Jamal will be an outstanding coach because those guys understand the game. They see it uh, they, from their lens. They see the game differently than other people. Um, but uh, where, where he's, he's taken his next step, he's improved as a shooter. Um, will he ever be a great shooter? It just depends on how dedicated he is to getting in the gym. Uh, uh, not in the offseason, every day. You know, uh, three years ago, if uh, when Crent Grimes was here, everybody be he'd be in that gym getting up uh, three or four hundred shots. Uh, same with Marcus. Um, we, we've had a lot of guys that, but they they were infatuated with with work and with uh, practice. Uh, Jamal's not there with that yet. You know, he doesn't work hard enough at this, at uh, shooting because when he decides to, he's going to become a much better uh, shooter. But where he's taken a step is taking ownership of the program. Um, and he knows, he knows what to say to these guys, and they go to him. You know, they need to ask questions uh, if, they, if, they, um, if they're a little bit cautious about asking me something, they'll go ask Jamal. We've got time for a couple more questions here. Go to Joseph. Kevin, so um, looking ahead, wondered just in terms of Thoughts on you know the game coming up Saturday. There, yeah. there aren't, there haven't been many games like that here for over history. Just in terms of top ten, um, you know, just caliber regular season games. Uh, you know, just any thoughts on on the yeah, crowd I, and what you want? Yeah, to I don't think the teams care about story storylines. Uh, you know, you you guys care about storylines. I could care less. I wouldn't care if we're ranked three fifty and they're three fortieth. Well, maybe that's 340 and then free. Uh, um, you know, it's a, um, you know, it's a, you know, we've played so many great programs over the years. Uh, how many times we played LSU and Arkansas and um, Oregon. You know, we, we play, we play everybody. Um, but Alabama uh, is our next one. So uh, our kids will be excited to play, just like I know uh, Nate's kids uh, will be excited to play. Um, you know, last year, you know, we lost four starters. You know, we, you know, sometimes you forget about that. You know, I think we've lost four starters every year for five straight years here. You know, it's, and that's difficult uh, to keep replacing all of those guys with new guys every year. Um, so. 
the only guys that really played in that game last year, uh, uh, that was before, yeah, yeah, um, well, Marcus played. Yeah, he played because he, he, he didn't get hurt till I think, oh, the next week maybe or two weeks later. Um, uh, I don't think Jamal was starting then, or was he? Yeah, he was. Was he? Was after uh, so we, who did we start? Marcus, uh, Jamal. Jamal. Garbs. Who was the other guard? At that point. Tajay. Tajay. Jamal got hurt. Yeah, I know, I know for sure we didn't start Jay Tyler. because Fabian and Kyler uh, maybe. And uh, Josh started, right? Uh, Jay won't play great, but he and didn't he start. Marcus, Kyler. Uh, Kyler, yeah. Um, yeah, so Tajay came off the bench. Jay won came off the bench. Um, so, you know, that was, that was, a, that was a great game. They, um, you know, it's a big win for them and tough loss for us. And um, um, after that, I think we've been on a run where we didn't lose for a while. Going off of your not getting with too much with the highs and too much with the lows, can a game like that for for a team does it show something or does it you know does it help gauge things or is it still too early to to see how you know depending on how it goes. What you you know what you have or what where you see the growth in the team? I don't know. I never look at it like that. You know, um, um, you know, freshmen. You know, you have to kind of watch them a little bit. But um, you know, I'm just thinking over the years. I mean, we played. You know, if they weren't, if we didn't have the number in front of our name and they didn't have the number in front of my name, you'd have probably a different thought. At the end of the day, it's Alabama against Houston. It's not ranked Alabama versus ranked Houston as far as the two teams are concerned. That's the storyline. You know, it's it's a nationally televised game. Um, both teams really want to win. But n neither team care about the Sterrett story. I, I, I promise you Nate doesn't. I know I don't. I just want to beat Alabama. I don't, I don't want to beat them because of the storyline or what it would mean later or what it would mean. It's our next game. You know, whether we win or lose, we've got a game Tuesday. You know, uh, Alabama's certainly good enough to beat us, but we're good enough to beat them. Somebody's going to lose. But we're going to play your next game, and we're going to play 20-some more games. You know, last year we lost to Wisconsin. Last time I checked, we didn't shut the season down. Kept playing. Um... Lost to Alabama last year. I think we lost those two games by three points combined. Um, I don't think it impacted us one bit. You know, we uh, came back. The best game we played all year was Texas State, as far as I was concerned. Regular season game. Uh, that game was flawless. The way we graded everything. We, we graded that the, the highest game we played all year was Texas State. Um, but, you know, you still got 18 conference games. Still got to go to... Uh, Virginia, um, still got uh, North Carolina A&T and uh, McNeese State. We're going to take them all. We're going to play them all. So, you know, don't get a lot out of me about that stuff. You guys know that, but you got to ask. <laughs> you got one with Chris yeah. and Chris Carter. Chris, you got to come stronger than Joe. <laughs> that was weak. But Joe's going to Emmanuel, um, what does it mean to have you know your teammates already look already looking for you? You know Jamal find, found you I think twice for you know wide open looks. And do you think I mean obviously you always could shoot, but do you think you have become an even better shooter since you you know arrived here on campus last year? Of course, yeah. I mean just as much as we're in the gym every day shooting with, with my coaches and then just getting the in game shots during practice, just to get comfortable shooting those type of shots so that when I'm in the game and I know Jamal is going to be looking for me, I know. Tremont's going to be looking for me. And it just it makes me that much of a better player being out there with them and taking those type of shots. And then combining that with the amount of work we put in every day, it's no doubt I've been a better shooter since then. Chris Gardner here on the left. Coach, how would you assess the, the team's defense rebound tonight? Good. They had, uh, they had five defense rebounds. So... If somebody else was to look at the stats and say that they would probably say it's ungodly believable. Anytime a team only, they missed uh, 30 shots and got five defensive rebounds. So that means that we got what percentage of uh, their misses? 80-some? 
70 is good. So I'd say it's great. Jerry, do you have one? Yes. Coach, you mentioned. Go ahead. Hang on, Jerry. All right. Coach, you mentioned about consistency with. Uh, you had four, uh, four seniors that have moved on in the last four or five years since you've been here. How do you make that judgment as far as the next freshman group coming in to replace those guys? Well, it's not always um, a freshman group, Jerry. Uh, Sometimes it's um, um, guys sitting on the bench that they're seasoning and developing, uh, like JVA. You know, uh, will JVA be a starter next year? I don't know. Yeah. Depends on him. I don't start guys. They start themselves. I just pick them. You know, he improves. He's better. It's not like I tell them they're going to start ahead of time or um, tell them what they want to hear. They, they know how this thing works. But um, I think our secret sauce has been player development. You know, we, we develop guys. You know, when we brought Tajay in here, we didn't bring Tajay in here to start. I thought our starting lineup last year, the team we started, I think, early in the year was uh, Marcus, Kyler, and Tremont. So that means we had Jamal and Tajay coming off the bench. You know, we didn't plan on those guys starting, but circumstances um, kind of, you know, they just make some decisions. But, uh, you know, uh, you know, the only guy I know for sure is not going to be back for sure is Marcus. So who will replace Marcus? I don't know. He's going to have a chance. You know, doesn't mean he will. Depends how much better he gets. Um, but I, I, I always like having guys in our program that we can develop. And like uh, uh, said, Leith, you know, there's a good chance Seth's going to be in here in January doing what Caleb Mills did. I thought that really helped Caleb his uh, freshman year. Um, um, Emmanuel's different because Emmanuel had a um, horrific leg injury. So when he got here, he he wasn't allowed to have contact because he was still rehabilitating. You know, he, he had a terrible leg injury. So um, what he did was just come here more for physical therapy and rehabilitation than it was basketball. Um, whereas, you know, uh, Big Sed Leith, you know, maybe here in uh, January. Uh, it's going to be good for him to get in here and develop. Because you know, those guys all will have their turn. If they're, uh, they continue to work hard and listen to the coaching staff and be patient. But, um, but you know, we, we're uh, very honest with the kids when we recruit. We don't promise them anything. Uh, we tell them this is the way it works here. You know, we're not, um, you know, we, we run this program. We don't really get any input from anybody else. Coach, Emmanuel.